OK, so you've done a walk. Now it's time to tackle the trot. Um, and uh, this um, image here, this is my new uh, favourite handout. This is a, a, a trot cycle taken from Spirit, Stallion and the Cimarron. Uh, and it's uh, of Rain, uh, the um, uh, uh, character, um, uh, one of the, the female uh, paint horse. And this is my new favourite because it's, uh, it's a 16 frame cycle, which is what we want. The walk cycle was 32 frames. The trot is uh, 16 frames. And then the run we'll do will be 12 frames. And those different speeds uh, work well um, together. Uh, but um, uh, this one is good because you've got the main positions here at uh, 1 and 17, which are, or, or rather the start positions, which are the same. And then 9 is the uh, halfway or mirror image. Uh, and then uh, between uh, halfway between those is 5 and 13. And then we can slot in 3, 7, 11, and 15. So uh, again, as with the as with the the walk, um, you've only got to do eight actual positions, uh, but there's enough information in there uh, that you can animate it successfully, but not so much that you get confused. Um, and uh, this was animated by the incredibly talented uh, Rodolphe uh, Gwenada, who's one of the best uh, animators over at uh, DreamWorks, I believe. He's um, still there. Very very talented animator. So drops are similar to runs. Uh, but unlike a run where you have this sort of, uh, sorry, trots are similar to walks, but unlike a walk where you have a rocking motion, which is to say uh, the bum goes up as the shoulders go down and the shoulders go up as the bum goes down, with a trot, both parts of the body work in sync with each other. So the front and the rear go up together and then the front and the rear go down together. Uh, the opposite legs lift and contact at the same time. This is taken from the animator's survival kit. So that's the so a trot is 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 much simpler in a sense than a walk uh, because both sets of legs are doing the same thing. Here's the main body positions shown on an on an Alsatian. Frame one here the body is going down. At frame five the body is going up. Frame nine the body is going down. Frame thirteen it's going up and frame seventeen which is the same as one the body is going down. Now you can animate it just with these four positions here, but it is a little bit too simple, uh, or rather overly simplified, which is why I like the, the rain cycle, which I've showed you, uh, which has um, uh, just eight, uh, which, which has eight positions. A little bit more complicated, but a little bit more information in there. Here's a uh, slow trot cycle using a lioness. This is taken from uh, the Lion King. Uh, and this is the one we're going to do uh, here's a uh, this is a 16 frame trot cycle uh, with with a uh, with a horse. Now, uh, just as a general discussion, you could, if you wanted to, animate the trot in the same shot in which you did the walk cycle. The advantage of that is that should you wish to do a transition between the walk and the trot, which is quite a difficult thing to do, but quite a cool thing to do. Should you wish to do that transition, it's easier if you have the walk and the trot cycle in the same shot because you don't have to copy and paste the curves from one shot to another. And copying and pasting curves in Maya is not as easy as it ought to be. Uh, the disadvantage of working in the same shot is that your infinity curves won't work as well if you're trying to do both the walk and the trot in the same shot. And big shots generally get a bit cumbersome. So I would recommend uh, doing it in a separate shot, um, unless you have a real yearning to do the transition, in which case you uh, you might want to stay working in the same uh, shot. Uh, the next question we have to ask ourselves is, do we want to animate the horse uh, trotting on the spot, or do we want to animate it trotting across the screen? If we animate the horse trotting on the spot, it will make it easier to do the walk cycle, or easier to cycle it later on. But the second approach, animating it trotting across the screen, uh, helps us lock the feet down to the ground. I'm going to suggest we take the first approach. It'll be a little bit more trouble for now, but it does mean that uh, it makes it easy, easier to cycle it. Uh, and, and, and should we want to bake out our curves later on, it makes it easier to do that. Or rather, easy to add a Z translation on the main mover uh, if we've got a cycle working on the spot. So here are the main trot positions. Uh, frame one, this is our rear right foot contact. Uh, there's our front left foot contact. They're the same, happen at the same time. 
frame one, then at frame five we're going up, frame nine we're going down again, rear left foot contact, rear right foot contact, frame 13 we're going up again, and then 17 uh, is the same as uh, frame one. And we finish with the what was this, the first position, the rear right foot contact, the front left foot contact. You, you see how important it is to annotate your, um, uh, your thumbnails uh, because with all these different feet going on, it's so important now that you make, you know, you write down on the thumbnails exactly what's happening at what frame. And that's why I go to all the trouble of doing this and also put the up and down arrows because otherwise I frankly get confused when I'm doing the animation. Troubleshooting on, on RET, I'm going to suggest that you use the same rig that you did for the walk cycle, RET the Clydesdale. Uh, the front legs can be a little bit difficult to straighten out. Um, again, make sure that these legs are straight as this as the front right leg travels underneath the body you want to make sure that it's completely straight that it doesn't bend and equally as the front left leg travels under the body that must be straight it must not bend otherwise you'll end up with a pantomime horse and again try the compress fetlock slider on the foot control uh, if you need some help adjusting the straightness of that leg um, once you've uh, got the basic trot working, you can you can add more detail. This is a, um, uh, a, a, a trot cycle from the animated survival kit. Uh, it works very well, but it's perhaps a little bit too detailed for our purposes uh, because you've you've got an, there's an awful lot of information here, an awful lot of in betweens. Um, but anyway, once you've got the basic trot working, you can add in the detail, uh, the overlapping on the tail as the body goes down, the tail goes up, uh, equally. Uh, as the body goes down, the ears will go up. As the body goes up, the ears will go down a little bit. And you can also animate the mouth open and shut a little bit uh, to simulate the horse's breathing and animate the nostrils open and shut, again, to suggest that the horse is breathing. Uh, this is the one I'd suggest. This is the handout that I would uh, print out. This is probably the best one. Um, uh, uh, you can see the up positions are marked here, the down positions, the up positions are marked here the down positions, but in between the up and the down you've got the contact. So you've got up, contact, squash, then lift, up, contact, squash, and then lift and into the up again. So I think this is the um, this is the Goldilocks handout. Just enough detail so that you've got all the information there you need, but not so much detail that you get confused. So um, good luck with that, uh, and let's see if you can uh, um, uh, transition from, or let's see if having done a successful walk cycle, you can now do a successful trot cycle too.